Right, so we're gonna look at some Venn diagrams. So what is a Venn diagram? Um, first of all, we'll look at, we'll just take a look at two different sets. Let's call them A and B. Um, and we're gonna call A, we're gonna say A is one, two, three, four. Keep it nice and simple. One, two, three, four. And B can be uh, two, four, six, eight. Okay. So this is a nice way to look at sets, but Venn diagrams makes everything look a lot neater and easier to look at. It means we represent the data just look in a different kind of way. So if I want to say show A, I'm just gonna draw a circle. I'm gonna put an A up here so I know that it's A. And I'm gonna put all the elements inside of A. So what you do is you write uh, the letter or the number with a little dot beside it. Um, and two, three, and four. Okay, and we could do the same for B. So we'll do B down here. So B is down here and that's two, four, six, and eight. Okay, so that looks great, but it doesn't really tell us much. So let's take what we've done there and actually turn it into two sets together. So I'm gonna draw one circle like this and another one overlapping. And what this one's gonna be is gonna be A and this one's gonna be B. And let's take a look at what we had just done. So if I take what was in A here, which is one, two, three, four. So we've got one. Um, and I'm gonna put in three. And over here we have two, four, six, eight, but I'm only gonna put in six and eight. This little gap in here is what's in A and also in B. So what's in A and in B? Well, two is in A and B, so two can go in here. And four is also in A and B, so four can go in here. So what this means is in A altogether, if we put our hand over this, we've got one, two, three, four, which is the same as what we started with, one, two, three, four. If I put my hand over A, and we have only B, we got two, four, six, eight. But this little gap in the middle is what's in both of them. Okay, so that's how Venn diagrams work. So now we need to look at what, what does this, what are these things actually called? So if we take just two random sets like this, shade in this part here, the shaded in part here is called the intersection. Intersection, okay? And the intersection is shown by a little um, symbol. I'm gonna put it in brackets here. It's like an N, okay? So let's go back up here to this one. And if we just look at this and we say, sorry, not meant to be an equal sign there. A intersection B is equal to what? So what set is A intersection B? So the intersection is this middle bit, remember? So what's in that middle bit? Well, two and four are in that middle bit. So there is your intersection. So what that means is the intersection of A and B, so the middle bit of A and B, what's in A and what's also in B is two and four. So that's your intersection. Now let's take a look at another one called the union. So the union, if we take this and we take another one that goes into it, the union is going to be everything that's in here, we call this A, and everything that's in here, and we call this B. So this is called, I'm gonna do a dull arrow, the union. So what does the union actually mean? It means everything in A and B. And that's written like this, A union B, it's like a U, okay? So the union is just both the sets together. So let's take a look back at our last one. And if we look at A union B of this, so remember A union B is everything that's in this and in this. So we're gonna have one is in A, yeah, uh, two is in A, three is in A, and four in A, whoops, four is in A, and then what's in B? We've got six is in B and eight is in B. 
Remember our rule about sets is that we can't repeat an element. So two is in B, but two is already there, and four is in B, but four is already there. So there we go. So let's just do a little example before we move on. If I have a set, uh, let's call it C, and it is one, three, seven, five, nine, and we've got D, which is going to be four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's draw this as two as a Venn diagram. So we've got two circles. We've got C and D. So first of all, what's in C? We've got one is in C, three is in C, uh, seven is in C, but it's also in D. Seven is in both of them, so we put seven in the middle. Five is in C and D, so C, that can go in the middle. And nine is only in C, so we put it over here. Uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So four, we haven't seen it yet, so we can put it there. Five is already here. Six, we can put in. Seven is already there, and eight we'll put in. Okay, so let's do a few things first. I want to know what the cardinal number of C is. So the cardinal number of C is one, two, three, four, five. It's five. Um, what's the cardinal number of D? It is one, two, three, four, five, okay. Um, how about the cardinal number of the intersection? So C intersection D is equal to two. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, how about what is C intersection D? So we're gonna have what's in the middle, that's seven and five. And then finally, what is in C union D? So in C union D we have one, three, nine, anyway, seven and five, and then four, six and eight. So it's a lot easier to figure out the union when you have them written out like this rather than like this because you might repeat an element. So remember, don't repeat what's in here. This is just all what's together. 